very, very rare for people to say, no, that's not possible. We need guys who always go the extra mile. We had thousands of applications coming in from schools around the world. The calibre has been absolutely fantastic. To work in a Formula One team that's won the last four world championships, you know, this is a huge opportunity that we're offering. Our role now is to pick the best three. The pressure is on. The exciting thing about Formula One in particular is the pace at which we need to operate. So we need guys who are going to thrive in that environment. The type of quality that we're looking for from these candidates is uh, determination, creativeness, the ability to work within a team and express their ideas. The first impression is how enthusiastic they all are. They're buzzing. To work alongside someone who is like a great of his time in terms of engineering is just the best. Wow, it was truly impressive. It was really cool to get to talk to Sebastian Vettel and interact with him in such a setting like that. It's the Disneyland for engineers. It's always been a dream to work in the motorsport industry. I like the fast pace. I like making decisions on your feet. Give it everything I have. First and foremost, we need credible engineers. Also, we'd like them to understand what goes on in the development of an Infinity road car. We're going to show them at the chassis dyno, the climate chamber, and we're going to give them a challenge about how the customers react with the cars. Those poor candidates are under the microscope. After three days, it's going to be a tough call, but the great candidates will bubble to the top. In conclusion, all of this technology will improve either the performance, efficiency. Before they came here, we asked the candidates to write an essay about Formula One technology and its relevance to road cars. Today, we're going to listen to presentations about those essays. At the start, the presentation was about 12 minutes, but uh, I've just done it four times this morning, and they were all they're all under 10, so I'm pretty confident. I will definitely do Formula One for my lifetime, so it doesn't matter if it's now or like two years later, I will still come back. As soon as they walk through the door, you start to see who are the candidates. You know, they start to give you an impression, the questions they ask, the way that they interact with you. We can have somebody who's extremely confident, a very good communicator, but the engineering exam, that's going to be key. They're not going to get through this without passing that examination. That's what we're really looking for. It's very hard preparing for the exam because you don't exactly know what they're going to ask. I thought after graduating that I'd be done with exams. I'm relying on my experience and knowledge that I've gained through my jobs that I've had and through my education. And I think that'll serve me well. The Design and Build Challenge is really there for two reasons. One, to see how creative the guys are. And two, to see how they're working together as a group. During that process, we're able to see who can influence, who can listen, who can lead. Essentially, who will come to the top of the pile. Might be all right, boys. Formula One is very much a team effort. It's problem solving. It's what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Group three. Overall, they work very well as a team. But William really led it from the start. Set one done. Yeah. Alejandro then spoke up and said, look, you know, I, I don't think this is the way to go. It's too complicated. Group one was the last group to come in and design. I called them Team Dodgy because we couldn't leave them alone for a minute. Eric stands out. I said to him, I think you were a cat burglar in another life. And they're totally looking to cut corners and we just want to win. Last night was a bit of a bit of sleepless one, sort of thinking. I mean, it would be exciting and probably would change my life, to be honest, um, in terms of where I'm going with my career. You know, I've always wanted to work in Formula One. You know, it's been pretty challenging um, with these 12 guys, and, and we'll see what the final outcome is today. Guys, this is it. Three, two, one.
So we've got all the scores, and so we've got top three. I think these are the guys that you know we picked up early in the process that had potential. But you have to say though, there is a very strong group of candidates, and I wouldn't be upset with having any of these guys coming to work for us. However you cut it, at the end of the day, the, the same so guys popped up. So I think we can uh, release the white smoke out of the chimney. We have a decision. We've had a great time. It's been fun. We did. However, this is about looking for engineers to do a placement in Infinity Red Bull Racing, and three of you have come to the top in that process. I was asked if this competition been running when I was a graduate, would I have entered? And the answer, of course, is absolutely yes, I would have done. I think the better question actually is, would I have made it to the final three? <laughs> All of you to have made it to the top 12 out of that worldwide entry, I think, is a, a huge result, one which you should be very proud of. So, the first is Jason Zide. <laughs> William Priest. <laughs> and finally, Eric LaRoche. just overwhelming. I keep pinching myself. It's just an amazing opportunity. I think everyone honestly deserves it. Everyone came to the Olympics and it was a great experience for everyone. You know, to be a part of this culture, to be a part of this team, to move from the United States to the UK, pure excitement. We want to follow them on their journey over the next 12 months. There will be ups and downs, so the journey alone I think will be, uh, will be the next chapter for us. It would be a life-changing experience for sure.